Hello there. You're watching Canal Algeria, and I'm your host, Kevin Fazakri. Next up in our news program. The President of the Italian Republic, Sergio Mattarella, is to pay a state visit on the 6th and 7th of November to Algeria, the head of an important delegation. Then we dive into Algerian-Italian strategic partnership in several sectors throughout the years. Civil and military authorities visit the families of the victims of the cowardly attack by the Moroccan Occupation Army, while the inhabitants of Wergla province are still under shock. Then finally, we take you to the cleanest village of Algeria, Tawrit Nathas, where the inhabitants set an example of good citizenship. Good evening and welcome to your English news. First in our stories, the President of the Italian Republic, Sergio Mattarella, is to pay a state visit on the 6th and 7th of November to Algeria, the head of an important delegation. This visit is part of consolidating partnership and reinforcing the close cooperation between the two French countries, as well as the opening of new perspectives for the interests of the two parties. Still with Italy, Algeria and Italy have maintained throughout the years a strategic partnership in several sectors such as security, energy, all based on mutual respect and neighborliness. In 2020, the overall trade volume reached $6 billion. Let's follow more details with Manel Martha. Algeria and Italy to continue the political dialogue they have maintained for several years, focusing on a strong and strategic partnership in various sectors to face up the regional challenge. Is. In December 2020, a Memorandum of Understanding on Strategic Dialogue, Bilateral Relations, Political Issues and Global Security was signed between the two countries. This memorandum enabled the two countries to strengthen bilateral dialogue and cooperation. The Treaty of Friendship, Good Neighborliness and Cooperation signed in 2003 between Algeria and Italy marked a turning point in their bilateral relations and was followed by a series of cooperation agreements in various sectors, including that of energy. Indeed, as Algeria's first customer, Italy annually buys more than a third of the Algerian exported gas. In 2020, the overall trade volume between the two countries reached nearly $6 billion. The hydrocarbon sector holds an important place in the Algerian-Italian economic relations, thanks to the partnership between the Sonatra Group and the Italian Energetic Group, INI. The two groups manage the gas pipeline connecting Algeria to Italy via Tunisia which allows the annual export of up to 32 billion cubic meters of Algerian gas towards Italy. The agreements relating to the renewal of sales and purchasing contracts of natural gas in the long term intended for the Italian market constitutes a big new step in the history of the Algerian-Italian cooperation. Among the names that mark the Algerian-Italian relations, Enrico Matte, who was once nicknamed the King of Oil. His anti-colonialist positions made him a great friend of the Algerian Revolution. He passed away in very troubled circumstances. More on this career, or his career, with uh, our own Rani al-Bahari. This genius entrepreneur was a great friend of the Algerian Revolution against French colonialism from its outbreak in 1954 until its triumphant outcome seven and a half years later. Like many Europeans who had supported the long and difficult struggle of the Algerian people for the independence of their country, this former fighter devoted his life to support the Algerian cause. His permanent contacts with representatives of the National Liberation Front abroad made it possible to mobilize the Italian political class and support the Algerian cause. In recognition of this man's fight for the national independence, in 1977, the Algerian authorities named after him the government pipeline linking Algeria to Italy. 
France accused him of supplying Algerian fighters with weapons and fuel when the OPEC was created. Enrico Mattei, as expert to the Algerian negotiator, presented the Sahara file as a document that was crucial during the Evian negotiations. Enrico Mattei was also called the king of oil. He died in a tragic plane crash on October 1962. To a different story now, the Sahrawi Human Rights Commission denounced on Friday a cowardly terrorist attack perpetrated by the Moroccan occupation forces, which requires the opening of an independent investigation. The cowardly Moroccan attack against three Algerians was strongly condemned by the Chilean Association of Friendship with the Sadr, and which expressed its total solidarity with the Algerian people and the families of the victims. Aflu and Aid Madi, the civil and military authorities, went to the families of the victims of the cowardly attack by the Moroccan Occupation Army. The aim was to bring some comfort and to remind them of the total solidarity of the state to all its children. The inhabitants of Wergla province are still under shock following the cowardly attack that resulted in the death of innocent Algerian civilians. The details with our own Manal Mafa. In Wirgla province, the family of the martyr Shtim Ahmed is still receiving people from across the country to support them in their grief by reciting the Holy Quran and praying for the deceased. His death was a shock to all of us. What was even more shocking was the way he died. We ask Allah Almighty to receive him in his vast paradise. The cowardly attack conducted by the Mahzen and which resulted in the death of Ahmed and his companions is a traumatic experience for the inhabitants of Urgla province. A cowardly and barbaric act which I personally try to understand but fail to do so. The civil society totally condemns this barbaric act and supports all the decisions that the higher authorities of the country will take as a response. The local elections kicked off on Thursday. The representative of the political parties crisscrossed several provinces of the country. The political leaders called on the Algerians to vote massively on November 27th. Ines Kilou has the details. The Secretary General of the National Democratic Rally, Tayyip Zitouni, pleaded from Burj Bariridj for a revision of the communal code in order to relaunch the local development in an effective way. In addition, the thoughts aiming at striking the stability of the country because Algeria will not change its principles by supporting the Palestinian and Sahara causes and by refusing the entry of the Zionist entity in Africa. From Tamras, Le Mustaqbal Front President, Aid stressed the importance of adopting methods of persuasion and dialogue during this campaign so as to gain the trust of voters. He also mentioned the Algerian people have resisted oppression and colonialism and are still facing enemies of the nation at home and abroad. In Musa Ghanem, the president of Albina Movement, Abdel Qadir bin Grina, considered that the 27th November elections will be an opportunity to mark a break with the old practices in the management of local affairs. He also expressed the commitment of his party's candidates to serve the people in a context of safeguarding national unity and fighting against all those who try to break the social fabric of the country from within and outside. The Secretary General of the National Liberation Front, FLN, Abu Fadl al Baji, stressed in Tissim Silt that the program of his party is based on the encouragement of local investment linked to the economic development of communes, particularly in the sectors of agriculture and tourism. He also called on the candidates of his party in Tissim Silt province to focus on the work of proximity. On the Sahrawi issue, the a network of solidarity with the Sahrawi people to the new UN envoy to Western Sahara, Sifan de Mistura, alerting him to the increasing frequency of violations of human rights and international law by the Moroccan occupied. Forces of the Sahrawi People's Liberation Army SPLA carried out on Friday against of the Moroccan occupation forces in the sectors of El 
Kari, Al Fursiya, and Mahbaz, with a violent and concentrated bombardment in the region of Umdakan in Al Bakari sector, according to the communique number 358 of the Sahrawi Ministry of Defense. With much sorrow, about the death of our co-worker, the security agent Faisal Shabata, who passed away at the age of 48 years old. He was humble, professional man. Our heart goes out to his family. May God have mercy on his soul. Verily to Allah we belong, and to verily to him do we return. Now we want to the cleanest village in Algeria, Thawrit Natahsin, where the inhabitants set an example of good citizenship. The story by Ben al -Mafa. Located in Akfadu municipality in Bjaya province, these narrow streets of Athsin village all lead to these beautiful squares, which are distinguishedly decorated, blending very well with the mountainous landscape. This jowl is considered as one of the cleanest and most beautiful villages of Bijaya, thanks for the mobilization and hard work of its inhabitants. I would like to thank the youngsters of the village who contributed in making it a beautiful place. It was not easy, but not impossible either. I'm very happy to know that our village won the prize of the most beautiful village in Bijaya province. The inhabitants' hard work paid off and allowed the village to win a cheek of 5 million dinars as a reward. This latter will be used to further take care of the village and decorate it. That was Rani Al-Bahari and Notman Al-Ma'afa. Take care. That's it for our news program. Good night.